Hey everybody. I'm going to have a little uh, Sunday morning chat about my native tank here. I just turned the lights on. This is my normal morning checkup on the tank to see if everybody made it through the night. If you haven't been following along, I recently had a columnaris outbreak in this tank and I lost, oh geez, I don't know, over 20 fish in about a two day period. And it's kind of stymied me. I don't really know how to move forward from this. I've been reading about the Calmanaris. I've uh, treated it with antibiotics. That treatment's already finished. I'm now treating the tank with salt. And I'm just wondering what to do next. I've got a smallmouth bass in here and it needs to eat. So I need to go collect minnows. But if I go collect minnows, am I going to just be bringing columnaris right back into the tank or columnaris i always pronounce that wrong i think uh the smallmouth is getting much more aggressive going after this uh largest minnow that was left in here and it hasn't been doing that up until a day or so ago so i'm guessing it's getting pretty hungry now some of the concerns i have is one if we look at this minnow we can see what could either be injuries or patchy, fuzzy bacterial infections that is indicative of the columnaris. It's in the same sort of saddleback position behind the head and you can see yesterday in particular it's actually starting to look a little bit better but the leading edge of the caudal fin and, and the top forward edge of the tail fin was sort of white and that was also a very textbook indicative uh, marking of this columnaris infection. So I'm wondering how after five days of treatment plus the salt treatment are we still seeing this infection on this fish? Is the salt treatment not working? And that's what leads me to this morning. I've been doing a little bit of research uh, both about the columnaris and treating with salt and I've also been doing some research on the fish in this tank. Now the Mayan cichlid I know can go all the way up into brackish water. Uh, I'm not the slightest bit concerned about that. I'm just talking about using regular uh, sodium chloride not the marine salts which is what you need for brackish water and that contains a variety of mineral salts whereas the aquarium salt or sodium chloride is just that it's sodium chloride and not any other types of salts so that's what I've got in the tank and if I raise the level even more that Mayan cichlid wouldn't bat an eyelash neither would my crayfish and I'm delighted to find out that the smallmouth bass and sunfish are also urihaline animals uh, I can actually, and I should have known this, I've fished in enough water that's tidal water and caught enough bass and sunfish in tidal water when I was younger um, that I should have just thought about that. It's been so long uh, since I fished anywhere near uh, any of the tributaries to the Chesapeake, the uh, Potomac, the Susquehanna, Patapsco. Uh, they all flow into uh, bodies of salt water. And there are plenty of times as a kid, you know, spending the afternoon on the river, the, the, the level of the water would change by four or five inches throughout the period of the day and it was because the tides were moving. So if I was in water that was actually being affected by tidal movement, you can bet that it was at the very least low end brackish and you could pull tons of bass and sunfish out of that water. So that experience alone should have told me that the bass are urihaline. Um, good old Google has reassured me that indeed all the species of bass uh, that I would be familiar with around here, the largemouth, the smallmouth, and the stripers uh, are all urihaline and can do brackish water. So I could actually convert this to a brackish tank. So I'm not going to do that, but theoretically I could. So that brings me back to the salt treatment. From what I can understand and what I can read, the columnaris bacteria cannot survive in a saline solution above 1% or at 1% or higher I should say. So I have yet to figure out how to convert percentage to boy that bass wants that crayfish. That's another thing I can do is catch small crayfish and put them in this tank and then that would give the bass uh, crayfish to hunt. So that's a possibility. Oh we've got a good look at him opening his mouth too. Um, so at any rate, I have not been able to find a conversion between specific gravity and percentage, and I'm absolutely bupkis at math. I don't even know how to figure out the formula of how to come up with what, you know, how 1% would correlate to a specific gravity. I did measure the specific gravity in this tank, however, 
and it's at 1.003, and that's pretty high. I mean, my, my brackish tank, again, we're talking about different types of salts. Uh, when you get into the dissolved solids in the water, the types of salts matter. So, again, you know, a specific gravity in my brackish tank, a 1.004 in my crab tank, has different salts dissolved into it, but it is still almost the same specific gravity, which means I've got a lot of dissolved sodium chloride in this tank. I don't know if a point, uh, 1.003 specific gravity equals a 1% solution or not, but usually when I see people talking about treating this, they talk about a teaspoon of salt per gallon. And again, I'm not clear whether that teaspoon of salt per gallon represents additional sodium to help the fish with stress, or is the one teaspoon per gallon the actual killing dose that takes care of the bacteria? I don't know, but I've got a tablespoon of salt per gallon. Actually, I've got a little more than a tablespoon of salt per gallon in here, and I just bought five more boxes of salt today, uh, so we can jack the salt up even higher. Uh, if any one of my most wonderful viewers actually knows how to figure out specific gravity conversions, please let me know how much salt I need to put in here and bring the you know specific gravity up to what to get to a minimum of a 1% solution. Because a 1% solution apparently is what's needed to kill off the um, columnaris. Now I did convert gallons to cups this morning, so 120 gallons is apparently, I want to say 1920 cups or 1960 cups, something like that. And I put seven and a half cups of salt in here. So going by that conversion, you know, I'm not nearly at a 1% uh, level doing that. But at the same time, my specific gravity is almost getting up into what you would think of as brackish water. So as usual, I'm confused when it comes to math and conversions and all that stuff. Uh, I have no problem admitting that there's a giant gaping hole in my brain when it comes to math. So, again, if anybody can tell me what 1% salinity on the specific gravity scale is, that would be fantastic. At any rate, my thought is, as far as the salt goes, if I keep this tank heavily salted and keep it at, you know, a 1% or 2% uh, solution just to be on the safe side, does that mean I can just bring fish home again and if they happen to be infected, they happen to be infected and it doesn't matter? I don't know. Uh, that's kind of what I'm thinking. You know, if I've got enough uh, salt in this tank that it's more than the bacteria can survive in, what's the big deal? Why not just bring the fish home? If they're infected with that bacteria, it's simply going to die off in the tank. Now, another good yawn. Now, that seems logical to me, but I've been reading a little more this morning, and the general consensus seems to be that this bacteria lives all the time in everybody's tank and it's just kind of in there and it's not a big deal your fish deal with it but if their immune system becomes suppressed and especially if they become injured while their immune system is suppressed like let's say for example a tank that has a very aggressive fish in it that's stressing everybody out and causing injury on other fish then you get this big outbreak because the fish's immune system can no longer fight off the bacterial infection. Uh, and then, of course, the open wounds just allow points of entry and you wind up getting this terrible infection. That ought to be an interesting showdown, the hyper-aggressive versus the hyper-aggressive. Uh, this Mayan cichlid will be coming out of this tank very soon. Uh, I'm going to be sending it to a friend of mine and I just want to make sure I get all of this uh, Colmenera stuff, you know, ducks in a row before I go sending him a fish that's possibly infected or whatever. I don't know. I just want to understand what I'm doing first. Again, as far as I can understand it, these good, healthy, strong fish, the ones that are the aggressors, don't aren't suffering from it, you know? Uh, I was reading a guy today, or reading, uh, he's like a helpline in the UK, I read his stuff quite a lot, he does, um, you know, advice columns and whatever, and someone was asking him about treating the tank, and he more or less said if you've removed the fish that's infected and it's in a hospital tank, don't bother treating the tank, there's no point in it, because this stuff just always lives in your tank anyway, if the other fish aren't infected, then... Their immune system is up to snuff and everything's fine. Don't worry about treating the tank. Just treat the infected fish. 
So am I wasting my time treating the tank? Am I going to go through all this treatment and not really kill it off anyway? Is it still just going to somehow always be in my tank? Is the salt that's in there going to kill it? And then it's just going to come back when I take the salt out of the water? I don't really know. A lot of this stuff doesn't seem like it totally jives with me. Um, I'm always a little doubtful when anybody talks about anything that just always lives in your tank. People say that about ick a lot, and I don't for one moment believe that ick just always lives in your tank, just waiting for an opportunity to spring out and grab a hold of the fish. It just simply does not work that way. Now, having said that, I am aware that some bacteria, some single-celled organisms take algae or yeast, for example. They're just ubiquitous. Every breath you take, you're probably breathing in uh, either yeast or algae. It's just everywhere. So you can't not get algae in your tank. You know, there's nothing you can do. You kill off algae, and immediately, as long as your tank is exposed to air, algae is going to get in it again. So I'm not saying that that might not be the case with this columnaris bacteria. Just because I've killed it off doesn't mean, you know, it's just this ubiquitous bacteria that's going to find its way back into my tank. I don't know. This is my first experience with this. I've had plenty of tanks in the past that had stressed out fish, damaged, injured fish, aggressive fish, and I've never had this outbreak before. I never had the outbreak until I brought fish home from the stream and didn't you know quarantine them or anything then i had an outbreak and i've done that many times in this tank it was only that one time that i brought a fish home that had big patches of white on its side and i didn't know what they were and i didn't worry about it probably should have worried about it but i didn't and then i had this huge outbreak so why if it's always in my tank and it's just waiting to attack these fish when they get stressed and damaged how come it's never attacked the fish before? How come this is the first time I'm seeing it? And it just happens to coincide with the one time I brought a fish home that had a big white patch on its back, a big saddleback mark right above its dorsal fin, which, again, is textbook what to look for when you're, you know, trying to determine whether or not you've got this columnaris outbreak. So I don't really know what to make of all that. Again, this is just a lot to think about, a lot to think about how I'm going to move forward. I do think, however, today I am going to take the risk of going out and collecting at least some small crayfish, maybe scooping up some minnows, um, maybe instead of doing a whole tank full of them like I did before, maybe just catch four or five, enough to put them in there so that the bass eats them uh, and is done with it. So... I don't really know what else to say. Again, this is there's going to be a lot of video coming up on this tank here in the very near future as I sort out my way forward and what I want to do. So make sure you're subscribed, and uh, that way you won't miss any of those updates. And I really do promise I am going to try to do more video and keep up on you know some of my other tanks. I just got a lot going on with this tank, and that's why you haven't seen much of anything else. So thanks again for watching this one, and hopefully I will see you later with some new fish in here or something. So thanks again. I'll see you soon.